All right. Good day or night, whenever it is you're watching this. Uh, my name is Thomas, a.k.a. The Purge, a.k.a. Nerd Black, and I'm going to share some stuff about how I write music the way I do. Uh, today, I want to focus a lot on the um, step sequencer and some things you may or may not know already about how the step, sinker work, step sequencer works, how to organize it, um, how to set up your levels and your panning in here before it even goes to the mixer, and some really interesting little tricks if you go to sort of the more advanced features. Um, I'm going to walk through making a little beat here in, in a minute. Might actually end up using it, might not. Um, not used to talking through my process so much, so we'll see how this goes. Um, before I get started, though, I made some notes. I want to talk about uh, my master channel and a little bit of what's going on in my mixer um, because I want you to know why stuff sounds the way it sounds uh, already. So in my master channel, I do this thing where I kind of pre-master um, all of my work. It helps me go a lot faster. It makes things sound a little bit more complete already. Um, so the way I kind of just master everything is I have an EQ set up that rolls off the super duper lows. It doesn't roll off, it filters out the super duper lows and the super duper highs. And that's really just a preset here. If you go to mastering, you can cut 40 hertz, uh, 30 hertz, or 20 hertz. Um, and then that just helps you keep your mix sounding clear and not muddy. And then the other thing I do is I pull the master fader down about nine decibels. And the reason why I do that is because by default, all these faders are pretty high and the default samples when you pull them out from FL are pretty loud. And so my premix tends to be kind of loud. And if I didn't pull it down here, nine decibels, it would come out um, already pushing the max levels and kind of distorted. So then, so this not only filters out the high and the low that uh, you don't really necessarily want in your track, it also pulls my levels down so that as it moves through the rest of this chain, it's not distorted, which is important because the very next thing I use is Fruity Convolver. Now this, by the way, is a reverb. Con con convolution reverb is a type of reverb that takes um, special samples from an actual space or um, popular um, reverb hardware and recreates the reflection. So for this particular uh, template, I called it Electro Purge because I have a few different sounds. I have my sort of nine inch nailsy um, rock or the cure kind of sound where I use a lot of guitar and um, pretty heavy, but more acoustic sounding drums. Uh, sometimes I use drums that sound like the Sisters of Mercy and stuff. And then I have my sort of electro side, songs like Only Black and, and Rain that I just released. Um, and right now I have it set up so that everything sounds like it's being played in a warehouse. So when I hit this kick sample, it's going to sound kind of spacey. Now it might be very subtle, because again, the wet signal is not super high, but if I get rid of this, what does it sound like? Turn that off. Big difference. So this is one of these things that I do. It helps me write because my music sounds real already. And that's one of the big, big, big struggles a lot of people have when they start writing electronic music is the music sounds dead. And the reason why the music sounds dead is because you're not recording it in a real environment. And so this is how I work around that. Um, next thing, uh, Maximus. This is a... Um, a mastering plugin that comes with FL Studio. Um, I could probably talk an entire class on this, so I'm not going to um, today. But I actually don't even do that much with it anymore because I have so much control over the mix. I just push my pre gains and I use a tiny bit of uh, saturation so that as the track gets loud, gets too loud, instead of it, um, instead of it soft clipping. Uh, it gets a little bit 
um, saturated as if it were running through like a tape machine. But you can do things like use different bands. So if you wanted to make sure your bass was all in mono because somebody sent you a track and, and their crap is muddy, you, you could do that. But since I have so much control, I don't worry about it that much. Uh, and then the very last thing I use is another limiter that is just at uh, 0 0.3, negative 0.3 decibels ceiling. So basically my track cannot clip no matter how much I push it through this. But that's why stuff already sounds kind of the way it sounds. So let's actually talk about what are my drums doing. Um, they are all getting bust into this drum smash here. Um, I actually got him going through two drum smashes. Wow, it's going to be boss. Whew. Yeah, so let me just do this and show you what I mean. So my kick drum is going through channel one here. And then I also have it set up so that it goes into these channels too, as well as the master. Now what these are doing is they're going through a Ferret TDS machine. This is a tape saturation plugin so that when my drums hit, um, it sounds like they're getting pushed through something that's distorting them while also giving me the clean sound. And I can adjust this if I want my drums to be really hard. I can push the saturation higher. I can push it lower if the song calls for something more soft. Um, other things I have going on in my send, I have lead reflex and I have box reflex. Um, I'll probably talk more about that when we get to... Um, actually putting something together. If I actually have a melody, I'll show you. But just suffice to say that um, one trick that I do to create motion and space in my mixes is I'll take a synth. Uh, so let me go to my leads here. Let's just pick something. Let me just do it. So this synth, if I put this in the reflection and pan this the other way, that was a bad idea. The sine wave. <laughs> Pretend I didn't do that. Let's use something a little more interesting. Yeah. Let's do this. Whoops. I forgot to right click it. So here's the thing. The piano roll, some people are weird about this. So you have all these different windows up here. So sometimes you have to remember to like right click and say I want the piano roll to be related to this particular um, synth or whatever. So let me just do a little simple pattern here. So this is already panned uh, right a little bit. Let me put it in my left reflection. So if you're wearing headphones this will be really obvious. But what this has done is I cut my dry signal here, so it's only the echo, and then the echo also then goes into reverb. So this creates a sense that the sound existed to the right and then bounced off the left side of the wall, sort of in your head, right? So anyway, I'm getting a little off topic here because I have ADHD, but I think that's one of the cooler tricks that I've learned to do in the last, um, last two or three years. I think that really took my music to another level as far as my mixes are concerned. Um, and I do the same thing with vocals. All right, so let's actually talk about the step sequencer. I want to focus on drums today. Here I have a ton of drums. These are samples that I have used in a lot of different Purge songs. I kind of spent the first week of the summer getting organized with this. These are either sounds that I like from the FL library or things that I knew I had uh, from old songs. And um, I want you to understand, so we have volume control here. Oh, sorry, we have panning and we have volume here. Now you might ask yourself, can't I just mess with that in the mixer? And the answer is yes, but I don't think these are redundant because the way I have my mixer template set up again is so I have my snares and my hi-hats and my percussion and my toms and they're all going into these, um, these sends already, and they're going out to the master. If I really want, if I have multiple snares, I want them to be mixed a similar way, and I want them to be compressed together, but I might want them to be panned differently. So 
just for example, let's say I have one, two, that snare, and then I go this snare. Let's do something a little interesting. Yeah, let's do something interesting real quick. What's going on? Sounds like nine inch nails. Yeah, here we go. Now, so if I want to pan this to the left, the right, I can, and that's cool, but maybe I want it to sound like it's going from left to right when the other sample hits. So I can play with that in the mixer without committing all of my snare drums um, here. Sorry, by doing it in the step sequence where I'm not committing all of my snares to be panned the same way. So now it sounds like this. So again, this is all about creating space in your mix. Um, and the, the FL Studio step sequencer helps you do that a little bit. So we might, we might work with that for a little while. And by the way, the tempo is set to 90. This is really slow. I might raise it in a minute here, depending on how this beat ends up turning out. Uh, where was I? So panning and volume, you can also affect the volume here again without committing to your overall sound. Because if you have multiple snare samples, see I have one, two, three, four, five, etc snares all going into the same channel. I may want them to sound like they're spaced differently. Uh, speaking of, these numbers here, this is a newer feature in FL Studio. These let you um, channel all of your sounds into the mixer here. It's, it's all related. So if you know you have a certain workflow, you know you like your kick to be number one, you like your snare to be number two, that's how I do it. And you can now do that from the step sequencer, which saves a lot of time. Uh, so selecting samples from the browser. So again, FL Studio has a lot of windows. Um, and so some people are a little weird about this, but I want you to understand this one here is your browser. When you open this up, you got a whole bunch of stuff. It looks a little uh, overwhelming sometimes. Um, you can create your own sample libraries. Uh, you can, so if, if you are already a music producer and you have a, a sample library that you really like, if you go here, um, you can mess in the settings. I think you go to Smart Find Selector. I don't mess with this too much because so many of my work is from FL Sounds, but I know you can do this. Go to Find. Actually, you probably go into Options and File Settings. Yeah, so if you go into file settings, you go to browser, extra search folders. Um, if I were to go here and find a sample library of stuff that I already know I love, I could pull that in and it would show up here in the browser so it doesn't screw up my workflow. But packs are where you're gonna find most of your things here. And so we got all these different drums, uh, cymbals, hats, kicks, etc. So if I don't like the sound of this kick, this FPC6, I can pull this one in and just drag it on. And so that's a, you know, that's a little heavier sounding. I want to put it back the way it was because I actually like that. But you can do that while you're messing and you can audition different sounds that way, just pulling it in from the browser. Uh, so I'm going to close that and focus on, let's actually make a beat here and show you some some stuff after I actually get some something going on here. So, you know, I think I want to do something a little faster. Let's do 110. I don't want to do a four to the floor beat today because the last song I wrote and finished was four. Um, so let's do a slower pattern. Now let's just go with this. Hey. That's some hats real quick. So another trick you can do with this, fill each two steps, fill each four, fill each eight. Um, this is a really fast way to do simple patterns. So I'm gonna just do fill each four. So now I've got kind of a slimy sounding beat here. Uh, uh, do a ride here. Tom 
hit it here, why the hell not? Ooh. Yeah, this is dirty already, I can tell. Now there's a reason why I'm doing it this way. So when you go up here to the transport controls, uh, there's pattern and there's song mode. I haven't even talked about the playlist. This is your playlist. This is where you actually arrange your song. And if I were to put my one pattern, right now it looks like this. It's just, um, I don't even know how many bars. That, it's an eight bar drum loop right now. Now I'm telling you, a lot of the time, I will take an 8-bar or a 16-bar drum loop, add uh, melody, bass, etc., um, chord progressions to it in pattern mode, and basically create the foundation of an entire song, and it'll just work. I sometimes don't even have to add any new instrumentation. I just add um, vocals, and, and I'll show you how that works here in a minute. but. What I'll do is, in pattern mode, I will make something very, very complicated. Um, I will get it to the point where it's too busy if I add anything else. So let's try and get to that point together. I'm going to just add random things, because why the heck not? Right. Where's an open hat? this 
for a second. <clears throat> I'm going to pause this for a second because this is a really good opportunity to talk about uh, different features. So I'm going to use this Moog synth. I'm actually going to use the, the Moogish one. That's a different uh, synth. And it's already set up this way. Okay. So I want you guys to know this. So there's some pretty advanced features in FL Studio, and you can do this with any instrument. I'm pretty sure that if you pull in a third-party plugin, you can use this. Um, when you click on here, this is your plugin window. It looks like a little plug, right? This is what the synth interface looks like. If I was using Massive, if I was using Absynth, if I was using Omnisphere, uh, some other, you know, some other third-party synth, this would still be here, and it would show me that plugin's window. In FL Studio, if you hit this gear, it gives you the detailed settings. There's this little wrench here. And what this does is it modifies any signal, any MIDI or piano roll data that you send to this so that it does something a little different. And when I, I'm going to go to some drums and explain the fat mode in a little bit, but this is the arpeggiator. You can take any synth sound and turn it into an arpeggio. Um, so let me actually just open a new pattern here so that I can solo this. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. I can just solo it. Look at me. I know what I'm doing. Let's just solo this. Boom. Solo. All right. So let me turn this off. This is the X. This is... Let me just explain. So if, if you're watching this, some of you know what an arpeggio is. Maybe some of you don't. I don't want to assume. So arpeggios are... Um, you know, it's, it's a type of spacing in the, the scale. Um, you basically skip steps, and you go up or down a scale, skipping steps, and it creates kind of interesting chordy, uh, harmonic sounds, right? Um, and so you can tell it to go either up the scale, down the scale, up and down the scale, up the scale, kind of stay there, then come back down, etc. All right? And you can even program this for different, um, um, different scales, so if you know you want a minor scale or, or a major flat, you know, major seven sustain scales, what chords and whatever, uh, you can do all that. I learned it's nice to just stick it on auto and sustain because if you put actual chords in, it'll know to play those chords. Uh, so let me just do something here. Let me just show you what this sounds like on its own. So what are we in, right? So this is just the Moog synth. Kind of a classic Moog sound, but one of the things that make these these Moog synths so iconic is they haven't they had an arpeggiator feature, and so you really kind of want to recreate that. And FL Studio lets you do it really easily. So let's put this on. Uh, just going up here. Hey, there it is. So this range setting tells you how many octaves up you want to let it go. Uh, you can tell it to repeat the note twice before going up or whatever, three times. Yeah, it's a different rhythmic quality. All right. Now, the other thing you can do, if you right click this time knob and go to set, you can tell it uh, how many, how fast you want it to be without playing with this knob. However, uh, this is a little more advanced, I'm not gonna get into this, but you can create automation clips where you can actually change this mid song. Um, but let's make it a little, uh, let's make it really slow and dirty. Uh, it's already on that, so let's do four steps. Maybe I don't want to do that. Let's make it fast. Yeah, there's that Nine Inch Nails sound, right? All right, so chords here, right? So let's actually do something a little interesting. So let's add another note here to complicate it. And then when it goes down here, let's add that. Let's see what that sounds like. Mm. All right. The arpeggiator. FL Studio arpeggiator. Let's unsolo this. Eh, maybe a little busy. Let's slow this down more. I'm 
sometimes you do something and it doesn't work. You know what, let's keep it, because I bet you this will work in another part of the song. I think it's about time I show you my big trick. So that sounded kind of busy, right? Now, like I said, what I'll do is I'll mix this to the point where I just can't go any further. And I could maybe play with the panning of these different instruments and stuff. Um, probably this ghost pad's too much. I think that opened it up a little more. So this is a really busy eight bar pattern now. It sounded really cool. I just got to the point where now it's too much, guys. So what I do is you go here and you hit split by channel. And so this pattern one now, you hit split by channel. It's gonna take every single one of those instruments and make it its own pattern. Uh, so let me just clone this so that I can keep this um, and then do, actually do it. So boom. Whoops, undo. Yeah. All right, no big deal. If I had pattern two out here, it would have broke it down right here, but that's okay. So we're gonna just do this. And drag these out. So now I've taken every single one of these suckers Every sound that I actually use is now its own pattern. Move that up. And what this will let me do is this will let me create a progression to that point in the song where, you know, a minute ago it was just too much. Let's. Okay. So if I now take everything, and then here's a handy trick, guys. You have the pencil tool. If you hold the shift key, and just, once it's highlighted, this will just drag it out more. So now, do something really cool. I skipped fat mode. That's okay, I think this is the most interesting part. I get excited with this. So now I can break this down to the really simple components, get rid of these busy parts. Let's get rid of most of these. Let's start the song with just the, with just the, let's start the song with just this stuff. All right, so we're going to take away all of this stuff. Right, and then when it gets to here, let's just, honestly, I'm just doing this randomly to be quick. Normally I would have this playing, and I would kind of listen to what I'm doing as I do it, but I just want to show you guys something neat. That doesn't come back. Let's let this come in here. All right, so then when this comes in, let's still keep these out. Watch this, guys. You're going to be like, Thomas, what the heck? How are you a genius? I don't know. I do this a lot. All right, let's just see what that sounds like. like the way it just did that so what I might do is I might take this beginning have it come back and then make a note here that this is where I want my first verse to start so right click here actually got to add one of these first this way some of these features are still a little funky so add a time marker add one and I'm gonna call this verse right So now I've got this build here up to this really cool part and then it drops out again. And then I would add vocals here. And then maybe let it build again. 
But the point is, this is a very easy way to create virtually a complete song. I may have to write a bridge now, um, but I might have like a whole song done almost already, right? So that's that. Let me just show you the fat mode on a new pattern because it's a really neat trick. I don't use it that much. So let me just take a drum roll. This is what I did on Rain for one of my sounds. Let's look at this. Put this in here. This is a way, that got really obnoxious real fast. This is a way to create echo and delay effects without actually using delay plugins for your drum samples, um, which is really cool depending on like what exactly you want to be doing. Some stuff is really cool. And, and what's nice about this is because it's, it's not affecting the audio in post. It's affecting the MIDI. It's affecting the notes that are getting sent. And so it lets you do this really like wild things where you can like bend the pitch of the echo. So let's say I want my echo to drop uh, three, two steps. I want my echo to drop two steps, so that's 200 cents, right? What does that sound like? Hmm. This is already an industrial song, right? That's all I need. So, cool stuff like that. Really cool stuff you can do with this echo thing. Uh, mod X, mod Y, just by the way, by default, if you're using drum samples, these are your filter controls. By default, it's set up as a low pass. So not only could I have the pitch drop, I could also have a low pass filter um, drop as well. See how it sounds farther away now? If I want to change what that is, if I go here, I can change it to a high pass filter or something. Now it sounds like it's getting higher. And again, I already sound like I'm Nine Inch Nails. Fruity Loops. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, let me know in uh, the comments or message me if you uh, watched this and you liked it. Uh, next time, if you want to talk about something different, because I still want to talk about the piano roll in detail because there's so much cool stuff you can do with FL Studio's piano roll. And I also really want to talk about the mixer in some detail. So uh, whichever one of those you want to hear more about, let me know. Honestly, I think piano roll is where it gets really exciting now that I've explained the step sequencer. Anyway, appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with us. Hopefully you got a lot of cool stuff out of this. And hopefully this uh, actually worked. Let me hit stop. Peace.